we are, are told about what blood cells do to some capacity and about different neurologic diseases, multiple sclerosis, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, etc. But now, I haven't heard in these general information centers that the third most intense study cell is the melanocyte, have you? But scientifically though, when the money is looked at as to what parts of the body the most money in research is spent on, it's the red blood cell first, the nerve cell, and then it's melanin. Now, again, there's a gentleman by the name of Thomas B. Fitzpatrick, excuse me, who's also at Harvard University, who has been doing this research on melanin for the last 40 years. And they have one of the largest libraries and one of the most extensive research centers on pigmentation and melanin there. Now, in my book, I talk about some basic things about what melanin does, what it does not do, its sensitivities, etc. And I think that I should just review that very quickly. I wanted to talk about some updated uh, aspects of melanin because I want to tie this in specifically to, again, a lot of the technologies and sciences that we're looking at. But do understand that I want you to be stimulated to definitely begin to do further readings and studying on melanin. There's all kind of data available, but it's not in the most typical sources. But when you do run into the source, you will find hundreds of thousands of articles on all different types of melanin and what it does. I talked about uh, in my book, for example, that because of this molecule and because of its relationship to us, it has to be addressed under all circumstances in every aspect of our life. This is not just something that colors our hair, colors our eyes, etc., but it actually is the foundation from which the cells of our bodies have originated. It's very interesting. They talk about something that happens within the first three days after conception, that something known as a neural crest forms. And this neural crest is responsible for producing our entire nervous system, the spinal cord, the peripheral nerves, and the brain. And the whether this is completely formed properly or not depends on the presence of melanin. When melanin is not there or it is in abnormal amounts, then this is when we begin, begin to have neurologic defects, retardation, and one of the most common problems with melanin deficiency is spina bifida. So cerebral uh, dystrophy, cerebral palsy, all of these things happen to deal with the health and the amount of melanin that's present at the time of conception. All races on the planet have melanin, but its capacity to be produced, the type that's produced, and its capacity to interact with the external environment is a genetic decision. And so therefore, when you are looking at Caucasians, these individuals do have melanin, but they have a very interesting type. It's a very, very small, very small structure, and they are clustered together, kind of like little granules, are cracker crumbs. So if you can get the idea that instead of having these nice round beach balls of a particular pigment in a cell, they're all clustered together in little crumbs in a particular corner of the cell. And so therefore, it appears, because they're all folded up, that you can't see this pigmentation. Now I wanted you to get this very clear of what's happening because it's just like you're having a sheet that's a beautiful pattern, but if the sheet is all folded up and you fold it up to the size of this book, you're not gonna be able to appreciate that if you put it in the middle of the floor as opposed to taking the entire king size sheet and folding it totally out flat and then putting it in the middle of the floor. It actually takes up the whole attention of the room. Well, this is the main difference that happens between different races and also with the different interactions that occurs with melanin. That is to say that because this, this substance is crumpled up, folded on top of itself, it has very little reactivity with the environment and has a very limited capacity to relay information to the nerves, to the brain, so that the cells of the body will know what to do because of the particular environment. For example, what am I saying? It's interesting that melanin, as I said, does not originate from skin cells. It originates directly from the brain. So if you happen to be looking at yourself and you recognize that you are jet black in the mirror, and you recognize that for every melanocyte that you have, 
and normally in Africans we have somewhere between 1,000 to 1,500 melanosomes per square millimeter of, of uh, skin. That you are actually looking at an external brain. So that means that if you are incredibly black, then when you look in the mirror, you are looking at an externalization of your brain. And I just want you to think about how awesome that is, because that means now that you have two brains. You have one that's outside that can see, feel, touch everything, plus you have one that's also in here, up at the top part of your body. Now, see, so you have to understand that if there's another individual standing next to you that has no pigmentation, which means that they have very little melanin or that it's folded up on itself very tightly, like the sheet in the middle of the floor, then who should have the greatest Sens sensory capacity on any level. Obviously the person who's standing out there with a brain outside of them and one that's also within them. Now that's awesome. Okay, now that's really important to understand. Now it's very interesting because they did some experience experiments with animals, for example, that based on the eye, because the eye has only two primary colors. The eye is either naturally dark brown or black, or it is blue, naturally. Any other shades of color of the eye are a reflection of toxins that have been deposited upon the iris. So any hazel eye is a toxic condition. So you either have blue eyes or you either are supposed to have dark brown eyes or black. The black dark brown eye is a natural sunglass because on the top of the nerve, from the back of the eye, it has been protected with melanin, so that the capacity to look into the sun, the capacity to be exposed to ultraviolet radiation, the capacity to be exposed to cosmic waves, radio waves, etc., have much less effect directly on the nerves from a damaging perspective as opposed to that eye that is denuded or doesn't have any pigment. So therefore, it is quite sensible and intelligent for individuals that have hazel eyes or blue eyes that they must have some type of external protection across the eye when it is exposed to intense light. Now, they found something very interesting, is that every particular part of the brain also has to be illuminated by light. If the brain isn't illuminated by light, then it actually stops functioning. So I think this is very interesting because what did they do? They took some children and they exposed them and raised them in totally white rooms. These individuals spoke only because of the individuals who would come in and stimulate them. They basically did not elicit very much brain function at all, being raised in a totally white environment. Now, if you were listening to what I was saying, I told you what on an electromagnetic basis, the white light is. It is actually very little light.